Hello there Photoshop Elements users. Here's a tutorial just for you. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take advantage of the pressure sensitivity of your Wacom tablet. Probably a bamboo, maybe a graphire, unlikely it'll be an Intuos, but perhaps. Okay, this is your tablet options palette right here. And you see I've got size and opacity highlighted here with this nice little black circle. Those are the ones you're going to use most often. Those are the ones I'm going to demonstrate up front with the brush tool. This palette lives right over here, right there. And you've got the thing over here called More Options, which I'll show you a bit more later. But Tablet Options, that's where you choose whether you're going to do size <coughs> or opacity. So let's start off with size. I've got a nice black brush here. And what that means is start light, you get a thin line. Go heavier, you get a thicker line. Up to the maximum that you've selected. And right now I seem to have a soft brush. So if I go to more options over here, down here is the hardness. If I take this up to the top and I clean up my palette here, now you can see it's going to be much more defined edges. There we go. So that's size. Now we're going to change size to opacity. Close this. Go back to the blank screen. Now what this is, it starts off very lightly and gets darker and darker and darker. So that's how you can do opacity. This is really good when you're working with an adjustment layer, especially with a layer mask put on there. <clears throat> okay, so can I use both of them together? Good question. Glad you asked. And here it is. Isn't that cool? You can do all kinds of neat things with this. So I can draw my pretty happy face here. And you can see how I've got wing. See, this is my artwork, okay? So this is this is what I can do. Okay, so there you go. And you can see that the opacity changed and the size changed as well. So the darker it is, the thicker it is in this situation. So let's get rid of this. Uh, take one last look because it's gone forever. Okay, there's another thing you can do with it with the uh, clone tool, and I'm going to show you that, but it's going to take me a second or two to set it up, so I'm just going to pause you and just relax during this pause, and I'll be right back. So, do you have a good uh, bit of relaxation there? This is a picture, obviously, of some wild grasses growing. Their problem is, whoops, wrong way to go. There's this unsightly and ugly coffee cup right here. Uh, let's move it up a bit. I want to get rid of this, so I'm going to use the clone tool to do it, and here's the clone tool. Now, what brush am I going to use with the clone tool? Because the uh, tablet options are no longer available. What you do is you drop down your brushes, and you've got the default brushes and all these other ones here, but I'm going to use the default ones. And as I scroll through them, I can see, ah, something's going on here. It's going from light to dark to light. That must be opacity, because up here, it goes from thin to thick to thin, which is size. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So let's choose this one right here. That's an awfully big brush. So let's uh, let's change this down a bit from 19 down. So that's going to be opacity, and I want to get rid of this unsightly white coffee cup. Seeing as how we're greening the planet, let's green this picture. So to do a, a, <clears throat> a clone, what you do is you alt-click someplace, like here, and uh, you just kind of lightly scrub away what you want to scrub away, taking the uh, pixels from over here where I set my source. And I can just tap and push and tap and push. And you see how that went away, just gradually disappeared? And if I wanted to, I could put some gravel up in there. There we go. We got a bit of gravel sneaking into where that cup was. See, the gravel is not unsightly. Okay, I got another white thing here. It looks like it goes all along here. So let's get rid of that. So we'll do an alt click here. And I can just tap it away if I want. See, I'm just tapping up and down with my brush on my pen and uh, it gives you a nice seamless clone. Sometimes when you're using a mouse if you're doing a clone you get these uh, funny little circles they, they look ugly uh, ta -ta. and you can see if I just kind of brush away it goes away gradually. There we go, we'll get rid of that, whatever that is. It looks like we're creating a pattern, don't want to do that. Um, over here we got some little unsightly bricks. Uh, they're not really unsightly, but <laughs> we can call them that so we can get rid of them. Okay, let's get rid of this one here. 
da, 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 da. change the source a bit make sure I don't have any any funny patterns going on there okay now let's just uh, double tap on our zoom tool to get it out to 100 percent looks great so that's how you use the clone tool with pressure sensitivity you always have to go up here and choose the one you want and you, you got a lot you can use stars to clone things away or, or leaves so that's how you do it and if you do follow these instructions and you do apply it to your work with your tablet and Photoshop elements uh, you'll really enjoy what you get because the, it's better than what you can do with a mouse now I could also spend a lot of time doing this background this is a funny little building and there's no parking sign but I don't think that the uh, amount of time I have available would let me do it so I hope that's given you uh, some idea of how to use the pressure sensitivity with uh, a Wacom tablet and Photoshop elements I hope you've learned something new here and that you'll apply it to your digital work and I really do appreciate you watching and stay tuned because I'm going to do some more uh, Photoshop elements video tutorials and when you get a chance drop over and visit my site if you found this through YouTube and uh, thanks for watching I really appreciate it